whatever. What's the name of the guy that's inside? Nobody has ever seen him. Well, that's it, yeah. What's well, Red Moon got Yeah, them. yeah. Can we, um, get my feet fixed completely? Walk and fall, lack of easy. Um, and. Hi everyone, I'm sorry about the, the interruption there, um, the sound was gone. Could somebody please let us know if they can hear us, um, send a few thumbs up if you can hear, or just comment and let me know if you can hear me. Is there sound in this one? Hi. Right. I'm Linda Byrne O'Riordan, I'm the acting paralegal for the Sanders family in relation to the murder of Kiwi in the petrol station on the M25 in June 2017. I'm here tonight with Michael A. O'Brien, who was um, himself, he's one of the, the Cardiff News Agents three who was, you know, wrongfully convicted of a crime he did not commit, it was a miscarriage of justice. And I'm also here with Paddy Hill of the Birmingham Six, who was also a victim of a miscarriage of justice. Um, myself, as I said, mm -hmm. To thank publicly um, for that documentary, which has led to a lot um, also in, in helping and the gathering of evidence. Mm. Since I made that, I have discovered new and compelling evidence through partial disclosure, not full disclosure as of yet, but um, I will be get the, with the help of Michael and Paddy, I will be getting full disclosure. Um, I have in have discovered in the transcripts um, a stuff that was withheld from the jury, which they asked for. I've also discovered that the shovel was never um, took into consideration throughout the trial, that um, during the trial, the, the pathology report states that Huey Sanders had defensive wounds on his forearms, which um, could have been caused by a spade, yet that was never questioned within the court. Now, I could keep going on and on about all this new and compelling evidence I have discovered, but I won't. Um, tonight, I just, like I said, I'm very thankful that Michael and Paddy have come on board and can see the injustice here that the Saunders family have suffered and Kiwi himself in his memory. So I'm going to hand you over now to Paddy Hill of the Birmingham Six and thanks very much guys. Good evening everyone. As you know I'm one of the Birmingham Six and I spent 16 and a half years in prison for the crime I knew absolutely nothing about. Since my release I've been helping other innocent prisoners. I'm glad to say that quite a lot of them have been exonerated. Mm -hmm. In this case, i seen the, the documentary, i seen the, the footage, and i seen the evidence which some of the witness gave. At the very least, I thought that these three fellows were going to be convicted, at least for manslaughter. But to walk away free from the court without any blame is just beyond me, considering the fact that the two people involved, they left the scene, they went about a quarter of a mile up the road to a roundabout. They came back down the roundabout and then they came back to the scene. If they hadn't come back, none of this would ever have happened. And as far as I'm concerned personally, they had the fact that they came back, that means they were they were thinking of a fight. It was premeditated. And the, and the way that the court has treated them is disgraceful. The family of the bereaved can't even get the evidence. The police decide what is relevant and what is irrelevant, which is quite wrong. All evidence, irrespective of whether it's relevant or not, is supposed to go be passed on to the defence. But in this case, out of 30 cameras, only four have been produced to court. The other 26 have never been seen. And we don't know what is actually on those until we do get them. But I've no doubt, as I've seen so many miscarriages of justice, the, uh, the evidence to prove that they're innocent is there all along in the unused material. And as long as the police keep on doing this and get away with not producing the evidence and not disclosing it, there's always going to be miscarriages of justice. There's always going to be families that expect justice from the police and from the system. But unfortunately, in this day and age, in this country, the, the system... And there's, say there's no such thing as justice in this country. Uh, it used to be you're innocent until you're proven guilty. Now, in English and Welsh courts, the thing is, you, you, are, you are guilty before you go into court 
and you have to prove you're innocent. That's not up to the defence. For to prove your guilt is up to the prosecution. And as long as they withhold information and, and what have you, this is typical of them. This is the way they operate. Because the evidence that they've withheld, when it is finally found out and seen by the defence, it will show that there is stuff there that is very, very relevant to this case. And they realise then the extent to which the authorities go to hide evidence. I said they're absolutely rotten, corrupt and perverted beyond belief. When I came out at the Old Bailey in 91, I pointed into the court the Old Bailey and I turned around and stated, those people in there haven't got the intelligence, nor the honesty, to spell the word justice, never mind dispense it, they're rotten and it's got even worse today. My name is Michael O'Brien. I served 11 years and 43 days for the murder of a Cardiff news agent. I was known collectively as uh, one of the news agent three with my two co-accused. Uh, like Paddy, since I've been released, I've been helping other people and trying to get justice for many other, uh, others. And uh, came across this particular case, which disturbs me in a number, uh, in a number of uh, issues. Like, you know, the, fir the first one which struck me was why was there 30 witnesses uh, at the scene, and yet these people wasn't called. You know what I mean? These are these are the the, the damning things. And then there was a, there was only six called. They they should have all been called. You know. And there's another thing: human rights abuses here. Because the, the authorities have failed the families. Mm. Uh, you know, no, one hundred percent. They they failed him, and you know something needs to be done. And this is why me and Paddy have come in today, and we're lending our support to the families, and we want them to know that you know they're not alone. There, there is a bit of a fight ahead of us. Uh, the inquest is the best way to go about things, and let's hope that we can have you know that the inquest does what it should do and call these witnesses with a view to reopening this case because that's what I think we need. Mm. And as I said, that's a, I had stated that in the documentary that this is our best um It's, really, it's the only avenue open to you. Yeah, it is. It is. It's the only home. avenue open to you. And I thank God for it because that it is there and that we have this chance. Um, some people think it was double jeopardy that they do, they'll never have to answer for for crimes they've committed. But um, as I said, with this and as Paddy stated, it is the only route we have. It is the route we're taking. And I have gathered a lot of evidence since I've done that documentary with Pete Middleton Pictures, whom again I would like to thank very much um, for, the, for that documentary. It did bring great attention and made awareness of this situation, of what the Sanders family are suffering. Um, there was a lot of stuff, as I said, withheld from the jury in this case, which they asked for themselves specifically, and they were refused. Um, a, a, a total of 52 cameras, they said six were down. They chose four to use in the court, um, which kind of gave different angles. Um, we, we want the rest of the camera footage, you know, which we will be which we are fighting for. Um, I have got, as I said, the transcripts and I got the sequence of events. The judge specifically said, the sooner this case is over with, the better. Now that would put any jury under uh, pressure to come back with a, with a verdict. Um, and they had sent letters in to the back, to the judge, and to the prosecution, and to the defence, requesting some um, CCTV footage, which the judge totally denied them. He said no, they had enough. They also asked for some um, stills of CC CCTV footage of the door, which again he refused them. There was a lot of corruption went on in the back of the court, mm. in the transcripts, that um, the people of the public were unaware of at the time. But I am aware of it now, and through the sequence of events which I've got, I've become quite aware of a lot of stuff. The most important thing here also was the pathologist in this case. He stated that Huey had defensive wounds, which coincided with those, like the mark of a spade, and they were his exact words. It was never questioned within the court um, about these marks on Huey's hands. The courts settled for that he could have got them from a fall. When we had a, a witness who was classed the number one witness from day one, Raphael Francis. Mm. Told from day one, you are the number one witness in this case. Be ready. As I said, he went on 13 days unpaid leave from work. 
uh, you know, in, t in anticipation of being called to give his evidence, he saw Curie Sanders struck with a spade. Now, the builder's whisk, which would be the, the uh, initially be the weapon that would kill Curie, was recovered at the scene. The shovel was never recovered, nor was it ever produced by the man who himself said he was uh, innocent and did not kill Huey. Yet he was the one who had the spade in his hand. If he had nothing to hide in relation to the spade, why has it not surfaced? Why was it not handed over to the police? Um, I know why, because it cont contains DNA. And what uh, Raphael Francis seen was caught in an area where the CCTV footage was down and was unavailable. Remember, the fatal blow was not even caught on CCTV footage, only for the accused number one, as I've always called him, was seen entering and leaving with the builder's whisk. We know who that was. The second person that had the spade in his hand entered and left with the spade and away in the van with the spade, and the spade was never seen again, nor was it ever questioned within the court. The pathologist gave two options, either the marks on Kiwi's forearms were from a fall, are defensive wounds that coincided with the mark of a spade. Straight away that eliminates the fall because the spade, um, uh, say, where the spade theory coincides with Raphael's statement that he's seen Huey hit with the spade. Now we are, this will go back to court. I have no doubt about it that these men will answer for their crime. <coughs> and like we said, it is true the inquest were gonna do this. The 24 witnesses that did not testify will be brought to the court, I said, either voluntarily or subpoenaed. Either way, they are coming, as I said before. And they will give their evidence, two of whom I have spoke to, that work in the garage and have no problem coming to court and will give evidence on behalf of the family. They themselves could not believe that these two men walked free from the court after what they saw. So, um, again, as I said, I now have the support of Paddy Hill of the Birmingham Six and Michael O'Brien of the Cardiff News Agency Tree, which is very of great importance to me and, and I'm very thankful for it. It brings it as another step closer to getting justice for Huey. And you know, as I said, it's not going to be a long video. It's just to make people aware that we're on the case. It's not going away and it will never go away until we can stand outside the Old Bailey and say, we have got justice for Huey Sanders and that day is coming. I just want to stress that 100% that day is coming. Thank you to everybody who has tuned in. As I said, it's not a long video. It's just more. I said there's other things which I can't reveal on video and I won't be revealing and will be revealed in the court. And thanks again everybody for your support. And we ask you to share this around and God bless you all and good night. Thank you so much.